Hello, welcome back to the second part of the lesson. We have been saying we are looking at uh, external benefits, external costs, and business. And we say external benefits refers to the gains to the society rather than the business. As a result of a business decision. So when a business decides to undertake particular activity, right? At times, this decision affects the society, right, and not the business. These are called external benefits. For example, when Coca-Cola decides to set up a production plant here in Mombasa, okay, apart from the internal gains, the benefits Coca-Cola receives by way of the increased sales, it is to high profit. Um, the society around is also going okay, how? By way of employment opportunities. The people that be employed there as drivers, as cleaners, as accountants will come from the community. So in that way, community gains. There will also be another gain on improvement, security, infrastructure, because they want to safeguard their property. They are going to set up security which gains in the society around. Now, what are some of the possible external costs and benefits of a business decision? Um, external costs would include things like the environment is harmed from waste products, pollution may damage the health of the people, there will be less energy, less traffic, um, more traffic. Okay, those are the costs of society. But the benefits, as I've said already, the jobs created. Other companies might move in, provide more services, there will be better infrastructure, there will also be better quality of life. Because when you are there, you get given a salary, you will use it to improve your standard of living. Now, these externalities change depending on the decision. So, these external costs, benefits, cannot fix. They may change depending on the Business may decide to close down, therefore, both the cost benefits go away. Now, sustainable development refers to development that does not compromise the living standards of future generations. So, as you try to develop, right, it must be sustainable, meaning the future generations are not going to be uh, their well being form of living standards is not going to be compromised by a production activity. Now, businesses can contribute to sustainable development by doing four main things. One, using renewable energy. For example, wind and solar. Right? So these are renewable sources of energy they are clean, they are efficient, and they are cheap. So a businesses that use this will ensure they will be sustainable. Well, number two, recycling and reusing their waste. The waste that is produced in production activity should be recycled and reused by the business. This will ensure sustainable Number three, using less natural resources. Right? Doing what we call clean production. So the natural resources, like uh, forests, right? Like uh, rivers, avoid okay? use unmade resources, sources that have been made. And that means. The natural resources will be able to ensure efficient, clean environment. Finally, a business can ensure sustainable growth or development by doing what you call developing environmental friendly products and packaging. For example, using biodegradable packaging. Now, around the world, there was a Headline 
countries to ban use of plastic bags, right? Those ones that were not biodegraded, they were a source of environmental degradation, they were a major source of solving waste pollution. So when they developed this uh, packaging that is environmental friendly, packaging that rots biodegradable, then it means therefore that the environment is being taken care of because if you, if you litter the environment in those bags, they are going to add to rot. People and consumer pressure companies think more environment. There are many reasons and ways businesses give the environment a higher priority. Pressure groups is a group of people who want to change policies or decisions of businesses or government. So they come up, pressure the government, pressure the businesses on how to come up with policies that protect the environment. Now, pressure groups acting on an ethical decision made by a business will lead to a consumer boycott. Right? Consumers will not buy spreader. These pressure groups, which may come and say, a certain company, let's say PFC, is using a lot of um, carbon products. They are using a lot of chemicals to produce their, their chicken or whatever it is. So people will boycott buying those commodities. That will force KFC to improve. Now, environmental friendly businesses can use the fact that they are environmental as a marketing advantage. So, a business that will market itself as being environmental friendly will have an advantage. What are some of the types of pressure that it is and how and why it responds? Pressure group is a group of people who want to change political organization of businesses. They lead to consumer boycotts. Right, consumers not buying their products. How and why it responds? Lots of public support. They get a lot of public support. A very bad brand image and reputation, which leads to laws in sales. Right? Laws passed by government, another way. And this is government making certain activities illegal. For example, dumping of waste, logging of trees, charcoal selling. So it is more expensive to manufacture the government passes those laws and also imposing fines. So if a business produces more pollution than the government allows, then they are going to pay heavy fines, right? And this becomes a cost, the cost of the business will increase, meaning the business will make less profit. And finally, why businesses respond environmental pressure. Why do businesses, why can they just say, let them say they're not going to act. Why do they respond? For one, the business reputation may be damaged. It may lose customers, employees, and even investors. If those pressure groups damage the reputation of farm and the farm does not respond, then it means it's going to lose customers, lose workers, and also lose investors. So the business may be closed down if government regulations to use greener methods of production are not followed. So if there's pressure and the business does not change to conform, then it means business may be closed down Number three, inability to meet government regulations may create legal problems for businesses. The government sets up certain regulations and the business may not be, uh, does not meet them. Then there may be legal problems for the business. Finally, the pressure groups may oppose the business, produce negative publicity and prevent the company's growth. These pressure groups may buy, they oppose the business, they need to go to court, they may do negative publicity so that they 
reputation of the firm is at stake and the business will not be able to grow. And that brings us to the end of our lesson today. Thank you. Hey.